Hi everyone, my name is Marinx Pasiewicz and in this video I'll show you how we can use identity with ASP.NET Core Web API to implement a reset password functionality. Here we need to support both the forgot password and the reset password functionalities. And of course, in this video you'll see how to do both. I will use a proper email service to send emails to the client and we'll explain how to enable that feature in your Gmail accounts. So, without further ado, let's get straight to the project. In the password reset flow, we usually send an email message to the user with the required parameters. And to do that, we must have an email service. As you can see, I have one already injected into the solution. I won't cover the logic of the service in this video because I already have a video that covers exactly that. If you want to learn more about sending emails in ASP.NET Core, please watch that video. You can find it in the description below. Now, I have already provided all the required information needed for sending emails in my app settings file. Here, you can see I have all the required properties populated, like the email address to send email messages from, the SMTP server, the port, and a username for my test email account. I didn't provide the app password yet, but I will do that in a minute. After that, I also registered this email service in the program class. Here, I extract the values from the app settings file and map them to the email configuration file that resides inside the email service project. I also register the email sender class as a service. This is the implementation class for the email sending logic. And that's all it takes. At this point, I have connected the email service with my app and since I will use a real Gmail account to receive emails, I need to show you how to obtain that app password which I haven't populated yet in app settings file. So, to obtain that app password, you need to visit this URI address for your email account. And then, in the security tab, you need to enable a two-step verification. For me, it's already enabled. But if you haven't done that, just follow the simple steps to enable it. Once it is enabled, we can type the app password here and choose the app password item. I also need to provide my password here. Now, I have to provide the name of the app and once I click the create button, I will get my password. Of course, I will not show it here, but as soon as you get that password, paste it into the app settings file as the value for the password property. Now, before I move on, I would like to let you know about our ultimate ASP.NET Core Web API book that you can use to master all the best practices to create powerful production ready web APIs. Also, Check out our Blazor course to create client C -sharp apps without using JavaScript. The links are in the description below. So, let's continue with the forgot and reset password logic implementation. Since I don't have a service layer here, I will inject my email service inside the account controller. To do that, I need a new private read only email sender field named email sender. I also need an additional parameter here of the same type. And finally, let's initialize the field. Ok, now to transfer the data between the client and the server, I need another DTO. So let's create a new class inside the DTO folder and name it forgot password DTO. I will need an email property here, but first I want to make it required. And also, I will use the email address attribute to verify the provided email address. Now, I can add a new string property named email. Also, for this flow, I need the URI address from the client app where the user will be navigated to enter a new password. It will be required as well. And now, let's add a new string client URI property. With this done, I have to add the forgot password action inside the accounts controller. I need a post action and also a part of the URI address. Of course, this is a public async action that returns task I action result and I will name it forgot password. Also, I will provide a single from body parameter of the forgot password DTO type and name it forgot password. Inside, I will first check if the model is valid. So, I want both properties provided and the email address must be a valid email. If that's not the case, I will simply return bad request. 
Otherwise, I want to extract the user from the database using the user manager's find by email async method. And here, I have to provide an email from the user. Once I get the user, I will check if it's null. And if that's the case, I will simply return bad request with the invalid request message. As I explained in one of the previous videos from this identity series, I am not returning not found here for security reasons. You can check my previous videos from the series as well if you didn't watch them. Next, once I'm sure that user exists, I can create a new token. And again, I will use the user manager's method named generate password reset token async. And I have to provide the user as an argument. What I want to do now is to provide this token as well as the user's email as part of the link that I will send to the user for them to be able to reset the password. And to do that, I will create a new param variable here and it will be a new dictionary with both string key and value types. And the first element will have the token key and the token value. And the second will have the email key and the value of the email property from the forgot password parameter. Once I have both parameters prepared, I can create a new callback variable. And here I will use the query helpers class with the add query string method to append the query string parameters to the provide link. I also need an email message. And here I will use my custom message class and provide an email from the user as the first argument, the title of the email message, the callback link with query strings, and finally, I will add null here for the upload file argument. With that done, I can await the send email async method from my email service and provide the message as an argument. Finally, I will simply return 200 OK result. Now, before I test this, I have to enable the token creation and register a default token provider. So first, here, I will attach the add default token providers method. And this method adds the default token providers that we use to generate tokens for resetting passwords. Also, I want to extend the lifespan of a token. And for that, I will use builder.services.configure method and provide the data protection token provider options generic type here. And let's provide the action delegate argument here, where I will set the token lifespan property to two hours using time span from hours method. Great. Now I can run the app and use Postman to test this. You can see a new post request with the email and the client URI properties populated. Again, this client URI is something you will have in your client app. Now, once I send this request, I get a 200 OK result, which means everything was executed perfectly. And I can check my email. And there you go. The link is here with two query parameters. Just pay attention that now some parts of the token, like plus sign or slash sign, are encoded. But your client application, like Blazor WebAssembly, for example, should be able to decode this token using the same query helpers class, just the parse query method, and send it properly to Web API. By clicking this link, the user will be navigated to the linked client apps page with both query parameters provided. Of course, I don't have the client app now, so let's continue with the reset password logic. Again, I will start with another DTO class named reset password DTO. In this case, the usual flow is for the user to enter a new password on the navigated page. So let's add the password property here. You see, I have a validation parameter as well. Also, the user should confirm that password. And for that, I will add another property here with the validation logic. Finally, the client tab should send the email from the user and the reset password token. So let's add those as well. Of course, the user won't populate these values because we already provided those in our email link as query parameters. After this, I can implement the reset password action in the accounts controller. As with the previous one, 
this action will be a post action with the additional URI parameter. So let's create a public async task I action result action named reset password. And it will accept a single from body parameter of the reset password DTO type named reset password. Now I will reuse the code from the previous action here. And as you can see, I again check if the model is invalid and also extract the user from the database and check if it's null. Now, if the user exists, let's create a result variable and await user manager dot reset password async method where I have to provide the user as the first argument, the reset password token as the second one, and the user's password as the third one. This method returns the identity result type result, and I can check if it's not a successful result. If that's the case, let's create the errors variable and use the result.errors property to transform the response into the enumerable string collection of the error descriptions. Also, I will return a bad request here with the new anonymous object with the errors property populated. On the other hand, if the result is successful, let me simply return a 200 OK result. And that's all. I can again run the app and now test this entire flow. So let's again send the forgot password request. I get 200 result. So let's check an email and here we see the full link. Now I will paste the decoded token here. And you can see that I already populated the previous properties with a new password and the same email. So let's send this one. And I get 200 OK, which means the password was reset successfully. Let's test this as well. This is the user with the previous password. And when I send this request, I get an invalid authentication message. But if I use a new password and send the request, I am authenticated. Excellent. You saw how with a few simple steps, you can implement this really important flow for your applications and your users as well. So if you liked the video and learned a bit more here, please don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons. This really helps the channel a lot. And you can hit that bell button to receive notifications of my future videos. So let's finish this one. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again in the next one. Until then, all the best.